How's everybody doing today? Hotep, hey, this is Michael. I'm Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecture writer, and historian. So it is Friday, October 7th, 2022. And I'm getting ready to teach another session of my online uh, class, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. So I wanted to come on and let everybody know we're getting ready to teach this session at our online school. And you can register for this eight-week online class if you haven't already registered for it. The um, uh, link to register is in the thread of this broadcast. And it's also on the homepage of our website, um, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. And in the class, we deal with thousands of years of history and we what leads up to uh, the transatlantic slave trade taking place. And we go through and analyze uh, the transatlantic slave trade as well. So this is an eight week online, eight week online course. And I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, uh, all of that. OK. Uh, and so, so here's the uh, brief overview uh, of the class of the PowerPoint presentation here. All right. Okay, okay just a second here. Let me pull this up. Okay, so a brief, brief overview. Uh, we have in slavery, even transatlantic slave trade. Important to study. We can't start in 1619 or when the Portuguese get involved in the slave trade, going back to 1441, Tom Gonzalez goes into Mauritania, takes out about 12 Africans and back to Portugal. We have to understand the history chronologically and deal with the 800-year occupation of Europe by Africans known as the Moors who enter into the Iberian Peninsula, today known as Spain and Portugal, from North Africa in 711 AD. Okay, so we, we go through and look at this history chronologically as much as we can. Uh, we not only deal with the transatlantic slave trade, but thousands of years of history that leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place also. And we know that August 20th, 2019 marked the 400th year anniversary of those 20 and odd, 20 and odd Africans or 20 and odd Negroes who came into Point, Point Comfort uh, in Virginia, August 20th, 1619, uh, in the uh, colony of Virginia. And it's going to be in Hampton, Virginia, not Jamestown, Virginia. It's going to be Hampton, Virginia. Now, uh, the year 2019 was known as the year of return as many African-Americans uh, are reconnecting and were reconnecting to Africa and traveling to Ghana and other West African countries. When we discuss the transatlantic slave trade, we have to first understand that African people are the original people of North, Central, and South America and have been in the land we call the United States of America at least 51,700 years. Okay, so we look at uh, work from Dr. David M. Hotep who wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans documented evidence and deals with the African presence um, in this country going back at least 51,700 years ago. We look at uh, numerous archeological discoveries, like um, the discovery that came out of Allendale County, South Carolina in 2004 by Dr. Albert Goodyear. And he's an archeologist at the University of South Carolina. And they found 13 different types of evidence that thoroughly documents an African presence in this country going back at least 51,700 years. This is before Native Americans came into existence. This is before Native Americans came into existence. They found artifacts, architectures, uh, campsites, carvings, Egyptian writings, footprints and lava, genetic M174 D haploid groups dealing with DNA and genetics, linguistics, painting, painting skulls, skeleton structures and tools. They found 13 different types of evidence thoroughly documenting uh, this African presence. And, and these were the Khoisan. The Khoisan are the short-statured Africans. They have the oldest DNA on the planet. 
They come from Southern Africa and they went all around the world and they were here in the land that we call the United States of America. Now, this article here from ScienceDaily.com, which is a scientific website to deal with scientific discoveries. Uh, this article is from November 18th, 2004. Uh, new evidence puts man in North America 50,000 years ago. And this is a, a summary of the discovery by Dr. Albert Goodyear. It says radiocarbon tests of carbonized plant remains were uh, where artifacts were unearthed last May along the Savannah River in Allendale County by University of South Carolina archaeologist Dr. Albert Goodyear indicate that the sediments containing these artifacts are at least 50,000 years old, meaning that humans inhabited North America long before the last ice age. So when we look at the Khoisan, the, uh, there was an article from Science Magazine, October 2012, uh, that deals with the October 2012 genetic study published in Science Magazine. And the study found that the Khoisan in Southern Africa are the oldest ethnic group of modern humans, the oldest ethnic group of modern humans. So these are the short statured Africans. Um, and, and, the, and their ancestral line originating about 100,000 years ago, the Khoisan formerly called by the derogatory term Bushmen are genetically unique and no other uh, currently known population has separated so early from our common modern human ancestor, according to the report. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Mazi uh, Nani, or how the hell do you pronounce your name? Um, if you actually read the book, The First Americans Were Africans Documented Evidence. See, unlike you, I actually know Dr. David M. Hotep, and I've interviewed him a number of times. Okay on the cover of the book they don't say this is one of the original people here in this country that's not what this says if you actually read the damn book and if you actually look at the um even better yet we have it right here it tells you that that is uh this is uh who they found in south america it doesn't say that this is one of the original people it actually if you actually read the damn book it actually tells you that inside the book, the picture on the cover was taken during the voyage of the HMS. The picture on the cover was taken during the voyage of the HMS Challenger on the 1872 to 1876 voyage funded by the British government for scientific purposes. The indigenous man's picture was taken at the most southern tip of uh, South America at Tierra del Fuego. The expedition is believed to have been the first to have an official photographer. This picture can be found in London's Natural History Museum today. So it, it explains who it, it explains who he is and when that picture was taken. Okay, so you need to do more research. All right, let's continue. And if you want to talk about West Africa, you do realize you got to understand how a lot of those people in West Africa got to West Africa. A lot of those people came from the Nile Valley region of Africa. And because of invasions, they move into Central Africa and West Africa. Not only that, if you look at if you look at uh, uh, the article here that we deal with in the class, this discovery that we deal with in the class. Uh, this one deals with uh, we're, we're older than we thought, and it deals with a discovery that came out of uh, Morocco in 2017, and they found human remains uh, of Homo sapiens in Morocco that date back 300,000 to 350,000 years ago. Now, this is 195,000. Uh, th this is over 100,000 years earlier. This, uh, this article here that I've talked about, I talked about this on the African History Network show when this article came out in 2017. And we deal with this in the class and other archaeological discoveries that are causing the scientists, the paleontologists, the archaeologists, the anthropologists to realize that all of this is much older than we thought. 
and it's causing them to push the timelines back. Okay, so we deal with numerous archaeological discoveries. We're older than we thought. New find pushes human origin back 100,000 years. Did paleontologists just find the greatest granddaddy of them all? Now, this article is five years old because that's when this discovery came out. Modern humans evolved much earlier than previously thought, researchers reported Wednesday in June of 2017. This is what happens when you come here and don't know what you're talking about. New discoveries, new discoveries at a rich site in Morocco show modern humans were hunting and probably cooking game animals 300,000 years ago. 300,000 years ago. This is 100,000 years earlier than scientists had believed until now. The site near Morocco's coast in the city of Macarat, uh, 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 Marrakech has always yielded interesting human remains, but they had been dated to around 40,000 years ago. New discoveries and new dating methods show that, in fact, many of the bones belong to modern Homo sapiens, modern man, and they lived as far back as 300,000 or 350,000 years ago. Now, there were no Europeans. The only people on the face of the earth 300,000 years ago were African people. Europeans didn't exist. Asians didn't exist. Native Americans didn't exist. And the oldest remains of Native Americans that you're going to find are Homo sapiens, modern man. With African people, you find us all different species. Australopithecus afarensis, okay? Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens, all of that. The earliest previous Homo sapien bones date back 195,000 years ago, and they're from clear across the continent in modern-day Ethiopia. This discovery here in Morocco blows the discovery out of uh, Ethiopia, which dates back to about 1974. It blows that out the water, and, the, and it shows that, that Africans were migrating out of the Nile Valley region of Africa, a hundred thousand years before previously thought but not only that when you had invasions coming into the nile valley region and in egypt and we talked about this with professor james small the interview i did september 25th 2022 dealing with the woman king then with the movie the woman king and the real history of dahomey you had millions of africans in the nile valley region especially in ancient kemet ancient egypt fleeing and going into central africa and west africa so when we look at the Dogon, and we see the Dogon, we see an invasion coming around somewhere around 400 BC. Dr. David M. M. Hotep deals with this in his book. We see the Dogon that are in Mali and Burkina Faso, they originally come from ancient Kemet. We see the, the Yoruba who are in uh, Nigeria. They originally come from ancient Kemet as well. Okay, so this is why you need to know what you're talking about before you come here with this nonsense. Read this article here, because I can tell people open their mouths and, and don't do research. Taken together, the findings show modern humans were dispersed. Let me bring this article back up again. Modern humans were dispersed across Africa long before anyone ever thought. This is why these discoveries are causing all the scientists and the experts to rethink everything and push the timelines back. The uh, Jean Jacques Hublin, a researcher at the Max Planck Institute of Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany, who has been working at the site at this site in Morocco for decades, told reporters there was no Garden of Eden. There was no Garden of Eden. Instead, he said, modern humans arose across Africa. Back then, the Sahara Desert wasn't such a barrier and people could have crossed North Africa much more easily, Hublin and colleagues argue. Now, the site has been under excavation. This site here in Morocco has been under excavation since the 1960s, but a team recently found a new layer along with flint tools that had been heated by fire. Pieces of bone and skull from five different people are among the new finds. 
So you can read this. It gets deeper into it. It's published in the journal Nature. Journal Nature is one of the one of the journals that publishes uh, these different archaeological discoveries. The journal Nature, the journal Science. Uh, writing in the journal Nature, Hublin and colleagues argue the skulls belong to clearly modern humans, even if the head shape is a little longer and narrower than those of modern people. As with all scientific discoveries, they are throwing out the evidence for debate and discussion. No single story is, is um, ever the last word on any issue. The team dated tools and bones, dated tools and bones to be between 300,000 and 350,000 years ago. The evidence makes Jebel Irad the oldest and richest African Middle Stone Age hominem site that documents early stages of the Homo sapiens claim. Okay, read, read the rest of this because this gets deep into it. There are other articles that came out around the same time uh, dealing with this discovery. All the news outlets had articles on this. Okay, so, um, you know, I don't have time to deal with simple Simon as nonsense like that. All right. But this is some of the type of information we deal with in uh, the online course. I've been teaching this class since 2017. I've been dealing with people like that that have no clue what they're talking about. Uh, a lot of them, and some, and some of them, some of them are white and don't want to deal with the facts either. Now, the Khoisan live mainly in. Uh, th this is a picture of two Khoisan women. The Khoisan live mainly in southern Africa in territory spanning Botswana, Namibia, Angola. Zambia, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. They are largely divided into two groups, hunters and gatherers, uh, or the, uh, the Sans people and keepers of the livestock, the Khoi Khoi people. The Khoi San languages include the distinctive click sounds, the distinctive click sounds that are not found in the languages of their neighbors. So there was a good article from AtlantaBlackStar.com uh, a few years ago called Five Ethnic Groups That Proved the First Humans Were Black. Now, some people can't handle that type of information. OK, a lot of them voted for Donald Trump uh, and some of them were black who voted for Donald Trump also. Uh, the, so th this is a slide from the class because we have uh, I think it's about uh, about 150 slides, something like that in the, in the class. Uh, but, yeah, we deal with this discovery, uh, this archaeological discovery and others uh, in the class. So we deal with the 800-year um, occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. We talk about the Olmecs as well. We look at some different uh, ancient civilizations. Um, and then we deal with uh, also the African presence here in the U.S. and how these teachings that the Moors take into Europe come to the, come to the U.S. And we see this. Uh, one example is, is with Freemasonry. And... When we look at the Washington Monument, that's an ancient African symbol called a Tekken. There were about 1,200 Tekken new all throughout ancient Kemet. We see uh, Tekkens that were taken from uh, ancient Egypt. We see them in uh, London, England. Uh, we see them in New York City and Paris, France. Okay, uh, Ancient Egyptians called obelisks Tekken new, Tekken new for plural, and they were also used to tell the time in the past. Their pinnacles were basically covered in gold to reflect the sunlight. Historians say the obelisks re represented immortality and eternity, and their long structure helped uh, connect the uh, heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth. Currently, Cleopatra's needle is the name given to the three uh, ancient Egyptian obelisks, one in New York City one in London, England, and one in Paris, France. However, they do not all come from one Egyptian site. The obelisks, obelisks or Tekken, uh, Tekken New in New York and London are carved out of red granite from the quarries of Aswan, uh, a major source of stone for Egyptian antiquities. The two uh, Tekken New were commissioned by uh, Nesubiti or Pharaoh Thutmose III for the Temple of the Son of Heliopolis near modern-day modern day Cairo, with each weighing about 224 tons and 68 feet. So there's a good article from facetofaceafrica.com called Cleopatra's Needle, How Three Ancient Egyptian Obelisks uh, Ended Up in New York City, London, and Paris. And the Tekken uh, 
or the obelisk that comes from the mythology of Asar are set in Heru and Asar's body being cut up into 14 pieces and 13 pieces being recovered and the, 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 and the Tekken being resurrected to represent that last piece, that 14th piece of Asar's body, which was the phallus that was not recovered. And the Tekken is a symbol of transformation and resurrection. There were approximately 1,200 Tekken new built in, in ancient Kemet, but only about a dozen are found in, in uh, Egypt today. Many of the Tekken new removed from Egypt are now in Istanbul, Turkey, London, England, Paris, France, Berlin, Germany, New York, New York, Rome, Italy, Vatican City, and elsewhere throughout the world. The Tekken new were now called obelisks by their new owners, and few know their origin or that they symbolize the resurrection of the African King Lassar. Read Egypt on the Potomac by Tony Browder, page 17. That's one of the books that we use in the class, Egypt on the Potomac. You don't have to buy any of these books to follow along, okay? Um, but we, we use them uh, as reference. And we go uh, all throughout history, look at different time periods of history, look at things like why is uh, Christmas celebrated on December 25th when nowhere in the biblical text does it state that Yeshua or Jesus the Christ was born on December 25th? Uh, we look at the film. Um, we uh, look at some aspects of the film Black Panther because Black Panther ties directly in the African history, African culture and spiritual systems. The Panther deity Bast comes from Bastet, which was a netter, a deity, a goddess in ancient Kemet originally worshipped in the form of a lioness and later in, in the form of a cat, a woman's body with a cat's head. Uh, 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 Bastet was the, uh, uh, the netter or goddess of warfare in Lower Kemet. Uh, she was worshipped as early as the Second Dynasty, around 2890 BC, BCE or BC, before the Common Era. Well, we look at things like, um, um, what does the word Wakanda mean? Because Wakanda is a real word. We see it in the Omaha Ponca and Sioux Indian languages and Osaji as well means possesses secret powers. Um, and it also uh, Wakanda is the great creator power of the Osaji, Omaha and Ponca tribes. Uh, Wakanda is an abstract, omnipresent, uh, creative force who is never personified in traditional Sioux uh, legends. And in fact, did not even have a gender before the introduction of english with this gender specific nouns we look at wisconsin there's a wakanda water park in wisconsin has been there for decades okay so and also wakanda is a key congo word as well which is in reference to family because kanda means family in key congo which is a bantu language and we know bantu is a group of about 500 african languages uh, spoken in Southern Africa, spoken uh, East in uh, Kenya, spoken uh, also in um, uh, across Africa in uh, East uh, to uh, Cameroon. Okay. And we look at uh, Kiswahili. Okay. Kiswahili is a Bantu language also. Okay. So uh, Kwanzaa is a Bantu word. It's Kiswahili, but it's part of uh, Ban uh, the Bantu language group, which is a group of about 500 languages belonging to the Bantoid subgroup of the Banu Congo branch of the Niger Congo language family. Uh, the Bantu languages are spoken in a very large area, including most of Africa from southern Cameroon eastward to Kenya and southward to the southernmost tip of the continent. So we're talking about down into South Africa. Okay, so this is just a sample of uh, uh, some of the things that we cover uh, in the class, all right? We, we have the uh, information here in the thread of the broadcast. Uh, you can register for the course. It's, it's an eight-week online class. It's on sale $80, regularly $130, okay? Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. And we have the... Um, in, we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Even after the class is over with, you can go back and watch the entire. Uh, you'll still have access to the entire class. So a year from now, two years from now, you can go back and watch um, the entire course. Okay. So we'll post a link here once again. You can use this information with your children as well. 
uh, I would say the content is PG-13, um, but it's very visual also, so you can use this with your children. I don't do a lot of cursing, things like that. It's not overly graphic or anything like that, okay? All right, look, we have to get out of here. I'm going to teach this class at online school. Uh, and also, we have it on the homepage of our website, uh, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, uh, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, it's right on the homepage of our website as well. Let me flip over to that also. Just click on uh, register here, and uh, you can register for the course. And we also we have this uh, in a bundle pack as well. So you can, uh, the second class that I teach uh, on Tuesdays, is from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement Movement and Black Power, 1865 and 1968. From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 and 1968. Um, so we have this in a bundle pack, both classes in a bundle pack. You get both classes for $130, okay? That's over $300 value. Click right here to register here for that. And then um, some of you all saw the broadcast that I did on Thursday with Brother Ajman from Repair Nations. Uh, they're having their uh, fourth annual conference, Black Solidarity Co-op Conference, dealing with cooperative economics and understanding cooperative economics and how to practice it. It's taking place, uh, it's a virtual conference, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, click right here to register. Suggested donations between $5 to $20, um, but um, if people can't uh, contribute anything, they can still register for free for the conference. OK, so check that. I'll be speaking uh, at the conference. I'm, I'm uh, speaking. I think it's about 430 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They have me because I'm doing a presentation dealing with some of the history of cooperative economics. OK, so we have that information at our website as well. The African History Network dot com. And here's the uh, interview I did with Professor Jane Small then with the woman king and the real history of the West African King of the uh, uh, West African Kingdom of Dahomey. All right, look, we have to get out of here. Remember, the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And if you like this type of information, also you want to support the African History Network, uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. And uh, we also have that information on the homepage of our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills, et cetera.